commencement. It's a ceremony unlike any other. For graduating students making the walk, it's a symbol of the end of one journey and the beginning of another. Well, it's an amazing feeling, looking out at a whole life ahead of you and all the hopefulness that that entails is just really heartwarming. For many, commencement marks a passage, the turning of a page, and the transformation from student to graduate. It truly is about the future, and these uh, graduates, I am so excited year over year uh, to see their smiles and maybe a little uh, fear, too, about what the future holds, but they're well positioned to make a difference in our world. An interesting thing about the word commencement, we call it commencement here, it's not a graduation. A graduation is more of a completion. A commencement means more of a beginning, so that they are starting their life journey here when they walk across the stage. I'm Daniel Booth for WGBU. Join us as we explore both the history of commencement and what it takes to put on the ceremony at Grand Valley State University. Congratulations on your graduation and thank you for allowing me the honor of being a part of it. Good morning and congratulations to the Dartmouth class of 2011. Today you have achieved something special, something only 92% of Americans your age will ever know, a college diploma. That's right, with your college diploma, you now have a crushing advantage over 8% of the workforce. The world you now inherit, whether you like it or not. The jig is up. The clock has run out, and the future with a capital F now rests with all of you in your goofy hats. And all because you went to Yale. When looking back, it's easy to diagnose a case of self-love. People are always accusing students of self-love, of self-obsession. And this is a bit confusing because college surely encourages the habit. You concentrate on yourself in order to improve yourself. Isn't that the whole idea? And out of this process, hopefully, emerge strikingly competent individuals with high self-esteem, prepared for personal achievement. Every year at graduation ceremonies, commencement speeches are made across the country by ex-presidents, actors, musicians, historians, even comedians. Good morning, graduates. Yeah. Families and friends of graduates, mothers, fathers, brothers, brothers from other mothers, sisters, roommates, roommates. Grandmas and grandpas, memaws and papaws, <laughs> bubbies and nanas and bapas, nani Gigi's and their special friend Herb, <laughs> Aunt Ronnie's, Uncle Gary's, and people who met on Tinder this morning. <laughs> I thank you for having me here to join you on this special day in this incredible city. I stand here humbled, gracious, and completely naked under this robe. <laughs> While there's no real indication of where the trend of celebrity commencement speeches began, the history of the commencement speech dates back hundreds of years. According to historians, early commencement ceremonies were less about outside speakers and more about hearing from the students themselves. Those graduating would give orations in Hebrew, Greek, and Latin, as well as debate philosophical questions. Today, commencement speeches are more about offering students philosophical advice as they start the next chapter of life. Well, the general message is, we all know that, that students came here to earn a degree, graduate or undergraduate degree. 
and I'm trying to get them to think about what else they learned outside of and including their area of study as they spent time at Grand Valley. I know that at Grand Valley you found joy, hope, inspiration, and you'll want to take them with you. They are definitely items for the bubble wrap, though. So fragile are they when the world sometimes feels quite negative. So the commencement speech goes back hundreds of years, but what about everything else? The robes and the ropes and the sashes and this hat with the tassels. And what's with this thing? Turns out those traditions go back hundreds of years as well. According to historians, graduation attire came about when universities started forming in the 12th and 13th centuries. Students and teachers typically wore clerical clothing, partly because the church was highly influential at the time, and partly because central heating hadn't been invented yet. Well, the history goes back to the 12th century, and they really had to wear the gowns because it was cold, and they wanted to stay warm. They put the mortar boards on in order to try and keep that heat in their heads so that they all then were consistent. In the late 19th century, American universities formed a commission that prepared a universal standard for commencement robes and academic dress, consisting of the traditional cap and gown which universities still wear today and we continue that to this day. We try very hard to make sure that all of our students wear the same gown and the same mortar boards, and we limit the amount of stoles or cords that they can wear in trying to keep up with that time-honored tradition. The robes are all specific to each level of education. For example, the gown for the bachelor's degree is usually the school's color, has pointed sleeves, and is worn closed in the front while the gown for the master's degree is usually black and has longer sleeves with a large section that hangs below the wrist. Graduation is a lot of symbolism. It's a rite of passage uh, for our students as they move on to the next phase of their life. Uh, what we do is uh, don this academic regalia and uh, for a president or uh, CEO, uh, we have first off uh, the medallion, when I, what I received when I was named the president of Grand Valley uh, now almost uh, 12 years ago. And then, uh, of course, uh, there are certain uh, levels of academic achievement, which is represented in the robe itself. And then uh, the particular uh, ermine, it's really not an ermine per se, but it is called the toga. I received this in honor of an honorary degree that I received from the University of Krakow of Economics uh, uh, some uh, years ago. And it was very special because it was 100 years uh, uh, since my grandparents emigrated from Krakow to the United States in 1915 and then here in 2015 is when I received this. Then there are the cords and sashes of different colors that drape around the neck and down the front of the gown. They represent honors and distinctions and recognize academic excellence or achievements in leadership. Some of the honors are based on grade point averages. Others involve achievements in fields of study or notable work. The regalia I have on right now is a little bit different from usual because normally I have a big hood across my, my front and down my back that indicates where I went to school and what degree I have. But the cords go under the hood, and in my case, I wore all of them today for the last time I'm going to be here. And so one of them is for membership in the Faculty Senate, one is for membership in IOTA, 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 which is a women's studies honorary. One of them is for um, excellence in teaching from the Liberal Arts and Sciences College. One of them is for Pi Kappa Phi membership. So it's affiliations, memberships, sometimes where you've gone abroad is shown. And some people, students especially, will have on stoles that come down like the cords do, but they represent maybe they're in a fraternity or a sorority or an honorary society, or if they've gone to England for study abroad, they have a, an English Union Jack, I think it's called, on a white stole. So they all mean something different about your experiences at Grand Valley. The cap, known as a mortar board, is flat and square, with a tassel fastened to the center of the stiff top. Bachelor's and master's tassels are black or the color of the gown, while doctorates are shorter and gold. Once the bachelor's degree is earned, the tassel is moved from right to left to show the transition between student to graduate. 
And then there's the mace. Just like the commencement speech and graduation robes, the role of mace bearer is ceremonial, dating back to medieval times. Back in 14th century England, the mace was used as a weapon to ward off any would-be assassins when officials took office. By the late 16th century, the tradition had become mostly symbolic. Today at Grand Valley State University, the mace represents the beginning of the ceremony when the mace bearer and grand marshal enter the arena. And if you recognize the music, there's probably a good reason. At commencement ceremonies across the world every year, those in attendance will hear the famous march, Pomp and Circumstance. We switched one year and it was not the same. So we tried one year to have a different processional and we said that's enough and we went back to our old Pomp and Circumstance. Pomp and Circumstance was composed in 1901 by Edward Elgar and was used for the 1902 coronation of Britain's King Edward VII. The name Pomp and Circumstance is derived from William Shakespeare's 1616 tragedy, Othello. Farewell, the neighing steed and the shrill trump, the spirit-stirring drum, the ear-piercing fife, the royal banner, and all quality, pride, pomp, and circumstance of glorious war. Pomp and Circumstance first became associated with commencement in 1905 when it was played at Yale University after Elgar received an honorary doctorate degree. It has gone on to become the most widely played for commencement speeches ever. While commencement traditions date back to the 12th century, hundreds of years later, Grand Valley State University would begin its own tradition in 1962, when a small group gathered in Allendale, Michigan to watch Governor John Swainson and officials break ground on what was then called Grand Valley State College. August 28, 1962, the great day for our groundbreaking arrived, hot and sunny and full of high hopes. Gives me a great deal of pleasure to sort of symbolize the advance that has been made in this Grand Valley State College to detonate a charge of dynamite. I officially dedicate and break the ground for the construction of the Grand Valley State College. Got it all wired? Where's our dynamiting expert? <laughs> Let us consider the ground broke. <laughs> That was the weakest charge of dynamite ever set off. <laughs> the late 1960s saw the addition of the first dormitories and construction of new academic buildings, including the Zumberg Library, named for the university's first president, James Zumberg. Grand Valley State College would accept its first class of students in 1963 and held its first graduation of 138 students on June 18, 1967. Today, over 6,000 students graduate from Grand Valley State University each year, and the number continues to grow. Well, we do that accountability report, and this uh, past one was our uh, 11th, I think, uh, in terms of putting out uh, uh, the information for our students, uh, prospective students, uh, for the state, uh, because we are a public uh, university. Uh, we put that out for our, our investors, the donors uh, that are looking at uh, our graduates that are going to provide them and us the human capital for our businesses, uh, both of the pro profit and the not-for-profit world. So what what uh, I see that uh, uh, demonstrating is that we continue to have good momentum uh, for the university. We're investing in the right places. And I think what we see with the University of Grand Valley now is uh, poised for even greater relevancy because of our strategic thinking about the future. We want to provide the students the best tools, uh, the best learning environment, and uh, at the end of the day, uh, always focus in on student success. Oh, it's been amazing. 
uh, the recognition from the university. Anywhere I go for the university now, people recognize Grand Valley and they'll say, hey, we've heard about you. So I was on an exchange trip in Germany and I had a woman from Australia mention that she saw my Grand Valley shirt and she said, my niece graduated from Grand Valley. Wait, I'm in Germany, you're from Australia and your niece went to Grand Valley. So a lot of recognition. At Grand Valley State University, commencement has been held at Van Andel Arena in downtown Grand Rapids since 1997. Home to pro hockey team, the Grand Rapids Griffins, hundreds of hours go into the logistical planning of transforming the sports arena each semester into the commencement ceremony. It's a lot of work. Uh, we come in the night before for a morning ceremony and we have to hang all of the banners. We have to cover up the ice. We put our blue carpet down. We put our Grand Valley signage up so it looks and feels like Grand Valley. While the university has doubled the number of graduates over the past decade, three separate commencement ceremonies take place each semester, drawing crowds of over 10,000 spectators for each event. There's a lot of energy in this place. Students are excited, parents are thrilled because they're not paying tuition anymore. And they're proud of their students for having achieved that accomplishment. So there's a lot of excitement here. Well, it's an amazing feeling. We fill up the Van Andel Arena, 10,000 people, three times during the spring graduation, once again during the winter graduation. And there's just such a feeling of pride and I don't know, sort of reminiscing that's going on as people think about the student that they have from their family or friends who's graduating that day. The whole place is filled with good feelings. Commencement begins with a processional, the mace bearer and grand marshal, followed by university faculty, followed by the students. However, sometimes not everything goes according to plan. It was a year we had excessive numbers of students graduating. Before we went to three ceremonies, we were trying to crowd everybody into two ceremonies. So the students had all come in, we had put them all in the seats, and in walked our faculty. Our students were sitting in faculty seats. So what we had to do is march our faculty in, walk them around the arena, and march them back out without anyone realizing what just happened, but there were no seats for faculty. After the commencement speech, one by one, students walk across the stage and hear their name called, most of the time. Those names are torturous, and I have a hard time finding readers every semester for this, uh, especially a female reader. I like to have two male readers and one female, and women don't like to do it so well. The men, they're pretty competent, the ones that read them, and I tell them just say it like you own it. And I think they massacre a lot of names, but they do it with such flair nobody notices. And then sometimes the joke is on the reader. Sunday, Kristen Storm Matusik. Kelsey Elise Frickin' Awesome. Dana Grace Bassett. <laughs> as excited as students are to receive their diploma, the 10,000 spectators that fill up Van Andel Arena are just as excited to cheer on their family member or friend as they walk across the stage and shake President Thomas Haas's hand. We love having all of the students um, come for commencement, but we really love it when their families come because their families add that excitement and that energy, and you'll hear them cheer for their student's name when their student is, is walking across the stage. And we know that for them, it is a very a highlight for them to have finally got that student out of the college scene and now making money on their own. And there's just such a feeling of pride and I don't know, sort of reminiscing that's going on as people think about the student that they have from their family or friends who's graduating that day. The whole place is filled with good feelings. Every graduate is an individual human being. So every graduate, you know, they have their own story and so we're so honored to be a part of that story. For some educators, seeing their students at commencement is a special moment as well. You know, I've been trying to put my finger on one word or phrase for that for 15 years now. It's a whole conglomeration of things, but among those things I think are the, the 
truly dedicated people here who very honestly put students first in the whole enterprise. It's not that we don't take care of the faculty and staff and each other, but the students are our reason for being here, and that shows in everything we do. It's such a nice thing to be at a school where that's really true and not just lip service. So that's one special thing, and I think why students who come here feel so well supported and, and succeed at a very rigorous academic place. Well, you're, my students will tell you that every year I tear up. We show a video, and at the very end of the video, it's kind of this, you made it, Grand Valley graduates, we're so proud of you, and I'm so proud of them. And it's that emotion that runs pretty heavy during that day, and I always get teared up. And then at the end, we sing the alma mater, and who can't get teared up when you sing the alma mater after the ceremony's finished? While commencement traditions date back to the 12th century, new technologies that have emerged in the 21st century are reshaping how Grand Valley State University is approaching the commencement ceremony. In the past few years, we've started incorporating social media into our pre-commencement ceremony. So the big screens will show people saying, so proud to be a Laker, love my Laker effect. We'll see parents tweeting at their students, you know, way to go, Susie. So it has really added to the excitement and we'll continue to do that. We try to get information from students or to get tweets from them even a week in advance. So we have plenty of, of social media feed to have on the big screen. When we think about happiness, too often we think that enormous career success or great wealth is the key to a happy life. But research, empirical research, does not support this. Instead, happiness can be tied to feeling connected to something larger than yourself, whether it's through your vocation, your avocation, or your family. So as you go forward on your life's journey, don't forget to assess your life as a whole. You are more than just a job title or a salary. You are a daughter, a son, a parent, a friend, a mentor, a neighbor, a volunteer, an entrepreneur, a Laker, and a leader. Don't let just one of those roles define you fully, but let each one inform and inspire your life journey. And don't forget your strong community here. By staying connected to this institution, you truly will be a Laker for life. Now, as I stand before you and look out at this audience, I feel an enormous sense of optimism for the future. I know that with your leadership, we will build a stronger, better society and a better world for future generations. It won't be easy, but the world is counting on you, and I have faith that you will live up to your generation's promise. One final piece of advice. Now, we, like many major organizations, have a creed that define us for who we are and convey our value. Our philosophy is be more. Two words, simple and elegant, but they speak volumes. In that spirit, I want to urge you to be more. Be more flexible, be more open to possibilities, be more engaged, connected, and involved. Be the generation that solves problems and builds a better future. Be more. I want to congratulate the class of 2015 on all that you've accomplished. This generation has the opportunity to redefine this country, fulfill that promise, embrace this moment, and make the most of it. Be more. Thank you, and good luck. Commencement, the end of a chapter and the beginning of another. The moment a student becomes graduate. A ceremony deeply rooted in historic tradition dating back centuries and celebrated each semester at Grand Valley State University. Well, 12 years here at Grand Valley and uh, many years uh, before that. I've been uh, uh, teaching now for 40 years and I, it never gets old. Whether in the classroom, engaging with students, uh, 
It is uh, about touching that future and enabling that future with uh, our efforts here at Grand Valley State University. We have lots of partners. Uh, we have our students. Uh, we're celebrating families with a number of first generation students that are going to walk across that stage. And it is all about optimism. It truly is about the future. And these uh, graduates, I am so excited year over year uh, to see their smiles and maybe a little uh, fear too about what the future holds, but they're well positioned to make a difference in our world. I think what makes it so special is we really care. I've talked to so many faculty members, we really care about our students' success and everyone shows that. We hold the doors open for each other. I can't tell you how many times I walk across campus and someone is standing there waiting with the door open for me. That's something that's pretty unusual and that's special about Grand Valley. The faculty and staff care about our students. They truly care. Some people say that they care, but we see it in action here at Grand Valley. The faculty are always um, doing the extra, going the extra mile for students, and so our staff. Everybody here really cares about one another, and that's what makes Grand Valley the wonderful place to be. Our mission says it all. We're shaping uh, students' lives, professions, and society. And if we take that uh, really to heart, uh, we can, across the entire university, no matter where you uh, are in support of student success, we all contribute to that together. Congratulations, Grand Valley graduates, Lakers for a lifetime.